Hello, my name is Don Unger. I'm an assistant professor of writing and rhetoric here at the University of Mississippi. My project is titled The Poor People's Corporation on Black Women's Leadership in Mississippi in the 1960s and 1970s. In the mid-1960s, many black Mississippians who worked for white people were fired because they registered to vote and or they participated in Freedom Summer activities. The Poor People's Corporation emerged within Mississippi's black communities to begin to address the sudden unemployment as well as long-standing poverty. From 1965 to 1974, the PPC provided technical support and financial assistance to and coordinated the sale of goods produced by over a dozen black worker-owned and operated cooperatives located in small towns across the state, including Mount Olive, Prairie, Ruleville, Macomb, and Canton, among others. While many co-ops secured their own contracts and business agreements with retailers around the country, the PPC also sought to market goods for them. To do so, the PPC founded the Liberty House Co-op. Early on, Liberty House focused on soliciting donations for the co-ops and marketing the other co-ops products by distributing mail order brochures around the country. However, the Liberty House soon developed into a storefront known as the Liberty House Outlet, which was located at 614 North Farris Street in Jackson. In the late 1960s, other storefronts opened in New York City and Berkeley, and they were run by Friends of SNCC members, such as Ellen Maslow and Abby Hoffman. Additionally, PPC goods were marketed at trade shows around the country during the late 1960s and early 1970s. Only one academic article about the PPC exists. It was written by William Sturkey, who was a University of Wisconsin-Madison graduate student at the time of its publication. Incidentally, the PPC archives are located in Madison. In that article, Crafts of Freedom, the Poor People's Corporation, and Working Class Activism for Black Power, Sturkey notes that a common narrative promoted by some civil rights movement scholars points to the mid-1960s as the moment where the movement's important work shifted from the rural South to northern cities. Such scholars often address the dissolution of the Council of Federated Organizations, legitimate fears of FBI infiltration, and the expulsion of whites from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, among other issues and setbacks, as impetus for the movement's northern urban migration. This narrative ignores the myriad initiatives that attempted to grapple with poverty and build black power in Mississippi from the mid-1960s onward. In my work, I draw from Sturkey scholarship and my own work researching the PPC, which includes a close analysis of their archival documents and oral history interviews with surviving PPC leaders, for example, Doris A. Derby and Jesse L. Morris in order to address how the cooperative grew out of and promoted black women's leadership. In terms of moving forward with this work, I'm left with two primary research areas. One, developing a more nuanced history of the organization by extending my archival work and conducting interviews. Part of the difficulties with this relates to accessing physical documents and archives that are scattered across the country, um, which is costly and time intensive, as well as daunting uh, during a global pandemic. Additionally, locating, contacting, and interviewing surviving members of the organization pre presents other difficulties. On the one hand, some of the people listed on the organization's executive board had little to do with its day-to-day -day functioning. On the other hand, when I have found names of people who clearly did the daily work, Many times last names are not included in archival documents. Number two, tracing the histories of individual co-ops presents other issues. First, much of the documentation I've found thus far refers to these co-ops by the co-op name and not necessarily by the names of representatives at meetings or the people who were involved in the co-ops. Starting this work might overlap with the interviews of PPC leaders or stumbling across these names in archival documents that I haven't been able to look at yet. It might also mean digging into records that are housed in the counties and towns where these co-ops were located. 
Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate any questions.